Thank you very much, and thank you to the fellow panelists. These are really uh, wonderful presentations, and um, this is a tough one to follow since we were going to talk about some similar themes here. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to give jump around a bit in the uh, presentation, and I'm going to start by just giving a brief sort of overview of where Slovakia falls both overall against OECD countries, but also specifically training, but then kind of back out again and say, what, what trends do we see across OECD countries when it comes to on-the-job training and digital skills. So first, Slovakia does pretty well uh, compared to other OECD countries when you talk about the labor market specifically. Unemployment rate is a little bit higher than, um, is actually lower than the OECD average, but it's a bit higher than maybe um, some of the peer countries in the neighborhood. Um, Productivity growth is also above OECD average right now, but uh, earnings are a little low, could be a little bit higher, um, but does uh, Slovakia does pretty well on uh, inequality. One area, and this is what all the panelists have touched on this, or, or most where Slovakia actually does quite poorly compared to OECD countries, is in um, education at the um, sec uh, elementary level, but up through upper secondary in the university level, and specifically with ICT training. Um, this isn't exactly uh, something that is, so all, all OECD countries um, are struggling with this. So six out of 10 adults lack um, basic ICT skills in training across OECD countries. Um, and the skills of the future that we really need are skills that are um, the type that really feed into uh, ICT work. So cognitive skills, um, human skills, but also advanced reasoning skills. And so what you see here on the left are these skills, and sorry, it's hard for me to read these, that, uh, all of them. But on the left is what you see. These are the deficits that you see across OECD countries that are always in demand and always um, needed. So sort of um, what can be done? Um, there's, a, there's a few approaches. Obviously, we're going to talk a lot about um, the, the education system, and that's very important. But also, um, a lot of people across OECD countries, uh, Slovakia is no uh, exception to this, and actually rates quite poorly, is you, there should be lifelong learning and people training um, all throughout life. It, I think it starts really with um, firms, but it's specifically uh, the people that we see being left behind uh, as, as the economies change, as digitalization um, moves to the forefront, um, they're the ones that are least likely to chain, um, train. So people on um, people who are low skilled, who ideally need more training, are ironically less likely to train later in life with firms. Um, people that are on temporary contracts rather than permanent ones. Basically, the people in the labor market that you really want to deliver more training to are actually the ones that uh, unfortunately um, train less. Um, and one of the big reasons of why people don't train is it, there's a couple of main reasons that you see here. Um, a lot of it is time and money. People just, they need to work and they don't have time. Um, and also, they, there's just the lack of uh, employer support as well. Um, so I'm going to leave it there so we have plenty of time um, for discussion. There's, there's many policy directions that can, both in the long term, but also in the short term. Uh, and I think we'll talk about that um, during the discussion that follows. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to stay with Andrew. And I would like to ask you about the policy directions that are going to be done in the most time in the short time. Uh, what what can be done now, you know, to get the results as soon as possible? Um, so I think, so I, I ideally reforming the education system, as I think we're going to talk about, is is the biggest thing that, that needs to happen, but that takes time, right? Both uh, to implement and then you need to wait until um, the, the youth graduates and enters the labor market. In the short term, there's really two things that can be done. One is, well, I, I don't know how politically controversial this is going to be here, but immigration, if there are countries where there are highly trained graduates and they are um, willing to come to Slovakia, if, if there are policies to accelerate that in the short term, that's, that's one thing. The second thing is um, firm training, and specifically if you can put into place policies that really build a pipeline from um, uh, workers in school right into firms and they can see right away that oh, there are good jobs to be had if I train both in the university, but ideally on-premises with firms, and, and there's a direct link between the training and a firm. We sort of like an apprenticeship model that we, we tend to associate with, say, auto manufacturing or manufacturing and more uh, middle or lower skilled jobs. There's no reason why you can't do something like this with um, 
ICT jobs, especially if, if they're particularly lacking.